You're welcome to today's class. Welcome to Texel Academy. As you can see from the first sheet here, the topic we are going to go on solving today is questions involving mole, Avogadro's constant, and molar volume of gases. I believe now you must have heard of Avogadro's constant and also molar volume of gases. Avogadro's constant is just this number. That's 6... 0 0.022 times 10 raised to the power 23. That is your Avogadro's constant. And then for the molar volume of gases, uh, we know that the molar one mole of if a gas at standard temperature and pressure is equals to 22.4 dm cube. One mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure is equals to 22.4 dm cube. Now let's take the first question. Okay. Yeah, this is the first question. First question says, what volume of oxygen at standard temperature would react with carbon to form 4.40 gram of carbon dioxide according to the following equation? C plus O2 gives you carbon dioxide. Now, this is just your relative atomic masses. For oxygen 16 for carbon 12 and also this hints that one mole of a gas occupies 22.4 dm cube at standard temperature and pressure so how do we go about solving this let me just quickly write down solution yeah solution so before we go on to solve this problem i would like to give us this particular that number of moles number of moles is equals to reacting mass all over relative atomic mass or relative molecular mass now that's molecular mass if we are dealing with molecules atomic mass if we are dealing with atoms so here we have and also this information given to us is quite important that one mole of a gas occupies 22.4 dm cube at standard temperature and pressure so what do we do from here what we are going to do is to quickly Try to understand the equation what volume of oxygen at standard temperature pressure would react with carbon to form 4.40 grams of carbon according to the following equation now this is what you have so we'll have it this way the first thing you are going to do is to check out which element you actually stated under involved from the equation we are dealing more with oxygen and carbon dioxide So the oxygen and carbon four oxide. So from this equation, as you can see, the equation is balanced. We have one carbon here, one carbon, um, two. That's two atoms of oxygen and then two atoms of oxygen. So the chemical equation is balanced. So what we're going to write down now is that one mole of oxygen molecule that it's going to give us one more of carbon four oxide molecule and having written that to we'll try to check what was given to us here we have the the mass of carbon four oxide reacting and also we can obtain the molecular mass of carbon four oxide so to obtain the molecular mass of carbon four oxide CO2 that is equals to carbon is 12 plus oxygen is 16 16 times 2 that's 12 plus 32 which is equals to 44 I hope you can see the 44 clearly so this is the molecular mass of carbon four oxide so the next thing we do is this we calculate this then 
if one mole of oxygen is will give us one mole of carbon dioxide from this equation we also know that one mole of carbon dioxide is equivalent to 22.4 dm cube of oxygen oxygen molecule why do we say that because of this given statement that one mole of a gas occupies 22.4 dm cube at standard temperature and pressure so one mole of co2 is going to give us 22.4 dm cube of oxygen hence let's then calculate that 4.40 over 44 is equals to what that is now you can quickly press that in your calculator 4.40 divided by 44 that's equals to 0 0.1 mole of carbon dioxide why did i write this down from this relationship that number of moles is equal to the reacting mass over the molecular mass this is the molecular mass the reacting mass given for carbon dioxide is 4.40 so 4.40 all over the molecular mass being 44 will give you 0 0.1 mole so let's go back to the relationship now one mole of carbon dioxide is equal to 22.4 dm cube of oxygen therefore 0 0.1 mole of carbon four oxide is, a, is equals to what you cross multiply so what you have then is this 0 0.1 times 22.4 all over 1 which is equals to 0 0.1 times 22.4 is equals to 2.24 dm cube of oxygen therefore this becomes the answer to the question remember the question is what volume of oxygen at stp would react with carbon to form 4.40 grams of carbon dioxide according to this equation so the volume obtained is equals to 2.24 dm cube of oxygen now that is the answer to the question so let's take the next example Now, if you look carefully at the next example. The next example is this. It says, calculate the mass of a magnesium atom. Also, the B part, calculate the number of magnesium atoms in a sample weighing 1.0 times 10 minus 6. Now, given that your Avogadro's number is equal to 6.022 times 10 raised to power 23, and then that the relative atomic mass of magnesium is equal to 24.30 equals to 24.30 now before we solve i would like to introduce the basic formula necessary solving this the formula is this that the number of moles is equals to number of atoms all over 6.022 times 10 raised to the power 23 remember what i said earlier that this constant that is your avogadro's number now why do we have this relationship it is because one mole of a substance contains exactly 6.022 times 10 raised to the power 23 atoms as it is equal to the Avogadro's number now I believe you must have known the theory before now so let's just go straight into solving so first thing we check is calculate the mass of a magnesium of a magnesium atom how do we obtain the mass of the magnesium atom let's also take this formula the number of moles of moles is equal to the reacting mass all over the molecular mass 
So we have two formulas here. One is number of moles is equal to number of atoms all over 6.022 times 10 raised power 23. Then the next one is number of moles is equal to reacting mass all over the molecular mass. So how do I obtain the mass of magnesium atom? Given the molecular mass of magnesium atom and also the number the Avogadro's constant I can first of all put it within this place to see a way of obtaining what I need so to the first equation number of moles is equals to we are solving part A of this question now we have a magnesium atom. Hence, our number of atoms in this particular equation is 1. We just have 1. So, number of atoms being this one is equal to what? 1 all over 6.022 times 10 raised to the power 23. That becomes the number of moles we have. So, the next thing we are going to do for us to obtain the mass, we have to bring this particular equation. This let me label this equation 1, this one equation 2, this equation 3. We are going to substitute equation 3 into equation 2. So when I do that, what do I have? So in place of number of moles, what I will have is 1 over 6.022 times 10 raised power 23. And then our reacting mass is what I'm asked to find. Already we have the relative atomic mass. So I will do just that now. So what we have now here is... 1 over 6.022 times 10 raised to the power 23 is equals to reacting mass is unknown. We'll put it down here as mass all over 24.30. Hence, the mass of the magnesium as of a magnesium atom is then equals to 24.30 all over 6.022 times 10 to the power 23. Now when you compute this value using your calculator, you are going to obtain exactly the mass of the magnesium atom. Now I'd like you to do just that with your calculator. Let's not spend so much time on those questions. Just compute this exactly. Using your calculator, you are going to obtain the mass of this magnesium atom. Now let's go over to the next example. The next example is calculate the number of zinc atoms in a sample weighing 1.0. 0 times 10 raised to the power minus 6. So we put down solutions. Solution rather. Now, we have been given already the weight of the sample as this. Now the element involved has been mentioned. And the equation is to calculate the number of atoms now if you can still remember the question i the equation or formula i gave earlier i said number of moles is equal to number of atoms all over the avogadro's constant or number which is 6.022 times 10 raised power 23 now, when you have this, but let's note that the relative atomic mass, that's the RAM relative atomic mass of zinc is 65. You can also cross-check your work to confirm that the relative atomic mass of, as I said earlier, you can check your periodic table to confirm that the relative atomic mass of zinc is 65. Now, when you have 65, what do you do next? The number of atoms, that's what we are asked to find. 
we need then to obtain the number of moles. Now we've been given the weight. I also have the relative atomic mass. So with these two, we can be able to generate or obtain the number of moles involved. And when we substitute that into this part, we can then um, multiply that with this to obtain the number of atoms or the number of zinc atoms. So let's do just that. The number of moles, number of moles, is equals to the reacting mass all over the molar mass or relative atomic mass or relative molecular mass i just hope you understand we don't really need to write out all of them now so when you have the two of this I will substitute this value, this one and this one here, so as to obtain the number of moles. Hence, number of moles of moles is then equals to reacting mass, which is 1.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 6, all over the relative atomic mass or the molar mass. That is then my number of moles. So take this, substitute this into, let me number the equation again, one, two, three. So you substitute equation three into equation one. So when you do that, this is what you are going to obtain. You discover that 1.0 times 10 raised to the power minus six all over 65 is equal to number of atoms all over 6.022 times 10 raised to the power 23. So when I have this, all I need to do now is to make number of atoms the subject of formula. So when I do that, I'll discover that number of zinc atoms is equal to 1.0 times 10 minus 6 all over 65 times 6.022 times 10 raised to the power 23. So I have to compute this. This is what I need to compute in my calculator so as to obtain the needed answer i need to compute this so let me quickly press that out and try to give us the answer but at this point i believe you can be able to just compute it to your own calculator and obtain a definite answer Point zero two two times one divided by five. Okay. So zero point zero nine two six times ten raised power seventeen atoms. This becomes the answer to the equation. So try to take note of the equation we solved. The equation is calculate the number of zinc atoms in the sample weighing this. And then when we solve, we will obtain this as our answer. So let's move to the next example. Here before you on the screen, you have example four. And example four goes this way. It says calculate the masses in grams of the following: one atom of sodium, 1.2 times 10 raised to the power 23 atoms of aluminium, and then the third one is 2.4 times 10 raised to the power 21 atoms of copper. So, how do I solve this? What I'm going to do is just this. Let me still write out solution. I believe by now you must have 
become familiar with the basic equations or should I say basic formula if you use in solving this. If I want to solve question I, the first thing I'm going to consider is what is the relative atomic mass of sodium? Remember in this question it was not given and I'm asked to obtain the masses in grams. So since the relative atomic mass of sodium was not given, it requires you may having a good memory of the atomic masses of um, elements, the ones often used in questions. Sodium, the relative atomic mass of sodium is 23 for sodium. So that's my relative atomic mass. I have been given also one atom, one atom of sodium. Now the question is for me to obtain the masses in grams. So which formula is going to help out the most in this particular question? This is the formula that is going to help out. That reacting mass all over molar mass is equal to number of atoms all over 6.022 times 10 raised power 23. I have been given one atom for the sodium. The molar mass has 23. What I'm asked to obtain is the mass of sodium. So what I'm going to do is this to just substitute. So here I have that the mass over 23 is equal to number of atoms, which is 1 over 6.022 times 10 raised to power 23. So when I make mass the subject of the formula, what I'll have is that mass is equal to 23 over 6.022 zero two two times ten raised to power twenty three therefore the mass is equal to that's the mass of sodium in grams is equal to let me compute the answer quickly So the answer is 3.819 times 10 raised to the power minus 23 grams. So that becomes the answer to the I. That is the first question. Now let's try to solve the second. That is the I, I part of example 4. So if I want to solve the II part of example 4, I will just cover this and solve that one. The II part says I should calculate the mass in grams of 1.2 times 10 raised to power 23 atoms of aluminium. Now, now ask myself, what is the relative atomic mass of aluminium? For aluminium, the relative atomic mass is equal to 27. So, having written down 27, the next thing I'm also going to do is to identify what has been given to me. And if you can look carefully at the question, I've already been given the number of atoms of aluminium. And hence the number of atoms, number of atoms is equals to 1.2 times 10 raised to power 23 atoms. Now the next thing, now I'll, all I need to do is to find the mass. So I also go back to the equation, to the equation I used in solving the first one, reacting mass all over molar mass. is equals to number of atoms all over 6.022 times 10 
verse power 23. The molar mass is 27. Reactor mass is what I'm asked to find. I have been given the number of atoms. So when I simply substitute, I'll have that the mass over 27 is equals to 1.2 times 10 raised to power 23 all over 6.022 times 10 raised to power 23. 10 raised to power 23 can cancel 10 raised to power 23. So that's gone. All I need to do is to make mass subject of the formula. Hence, mass of aluminium in grams is then equals to 27 times 1.2 all over 6.022. So when I compute this using the calculator, I'm going to obtain exactly the needed mass. So let me do that quickly. 1.2 divided by 6.022. So the answer to this question is equals to 5.38 grams. So I believe you've taken note of this. So let's get ready to go into the next question. So the ne remember we have the I, I, I part that's 2.4 for copper. So let me quickly produce that to us. So once again, for the I, 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 we'll write solution. So we have been given the element. We've also been given the number of atoms involved. And then let me introduce say that the relative atomic mass of copper is equal to 63.5. Okay, so I have this. The number of atoms of copper, number of atoms involved is equal to 2.4 times 10 raised to the power 21. So now we also have the number of atoms in question. So the next thing we are going to do is just to bring down that formula again, which is the reacting mass or the mass the mass mass i don't really need to i know i've been using reacting mass but it does in case we're in a reaction it's not really necessary i can actually write mass over molar mass and there is no problem with that reacting mass mass there's no problem we use specifically reacting mass if a, a, a reaction is being specified in the equation and in this question there is no specified reaction so mass is fine so let me just place a rule the same applies to all those one I've solved. Uh, we don't necessarily need to use reacting mass, but if we should use reacting mass, there is no problem. It is still mass that is being discussed and concerned. So now we take molar mass. Is equals to the number of atoms over 6.022 times 10, 23. So, I'll go straight to the substitution I mentioned earlier. Here I have my mass. Molar mass is 63.5. It is equal to the number of atoms is 2.4 times 10 to the power 21. And then the...
So, as I said, this is the answer to the question. They had grams to this thing. It has grams. Or possibly you can still rewrite it as 0 0.253 grams. That's the answer to the question. Okay, so now we are through with solving question. That's question. Okay, example four. You, do, you have done the I, the I, I, and then the I, I, I. So we are good to go into the next part of today's exercise. And this is the next question. And I, I would like you to critically consider this question. Just critically consider it. The question goes, what volume of hydrogen is produced at standard temperature and pressure? That's STP. When 2.8. 60 grams of zinc reacts with excess hydrogen chloride according to the following equation and here we have zinc plus two moles of hydrogen chloride giving you zinc chloride and hydrogen the relative atomic mass of zinc was given and also this statement that one mole of a gas occupies 22.4 dm cube at standard temperature and pressure so how do we approach this question? Let's first of all write down solution. Let's observe this um, chemical equation to see that it is balanced. So when you observe, you have one zinc atom, one zinc atom, two, um, two chlorine atoms here, two chlorine atoms here, two hydrogen atoms, two hydrogen atoms. Okay, that means this equation is balanced. And we can actually use this relationship to go further in solving the equation. So the question is what volume of hydrogen so we are concerned with volume of hydrogen when 2.60 grams of zinc reacts so we have hydrogen and zinc being the major elements being mentioned in this equation so how do we use their relationship from this equation you will discover that one more of zinc will liberate or gives us one mole of zinc gives us one mole of hydrogen molecule i don't know if you've noticed that critically from the balanced chemical equation so the next thing we we'll try to get also is uh, what is the actual mole of zinc involved in this equation that's what we're going to check. So let's go so this way. We also know that one mole of zinc will liberate 22.4 dm cube of hydrogen gas. That is because of this statement that one mole of a gas at standard temperature of a gas at standard temperature and pressure occupies 22.4 dm cube at STP. So if one mole of zinc will liberate one mole of hydrogen gas, that means the gas being liberated will actually occupy 22.4 dm cube. Okay, so because of that, one mole of zinc will liberate 22.4 dm cube of hydrogen gas. Now we'll go further to the next part. Now we're going to try to get the actual mole of of a uh, of zinc involved in then let me introduce you to this equation that the number of moles number of moles is equals to the volume of gas all over 22.4 dm cube now this 22.4 dm cube is known as the molar volume of the gas that is what it is called the molar volume of the gas 22.4 dm cube because one mole of a gas at standard temperature and pressure occupies 22.4 dm cube. So now we also know that the number of moles is equal to the reacting mass all over the molar mass. We have solved questions relating to that severally today. So let me quickly write down. I put down here reacting mass. Over molar mass is equal to volume 
of gas over 22.4 dm cube. So the mass given is 2.60 plus 2.60. The molar mass of zinc is 65. Here yeah, that is 65. It is equal to volume of the gas produced being that of hydrogen, volume of gas. All over 22.4 dm cube. And if we want to obtain the volume of hydrogen gas produced, all we need to do is to make volume of gas the subject of formula. Therefore, volume of hydrogen gas produced is equal to 2.60 all over 65 times 22.4 dm cube. Now that is going to give us, that is going to be equal to, let me quickly calculate that and give you the answer to that. So the answer is 0 0.8969 dn cube. You can actually approximate that to let me put it down here 0 0.90 dm cube and this becomes the volume of hydrogen produced at standard temperature and pressure i would like to take the question again since i think it's a little bit um unique from what i've been solving since today it says what volume of hydrogen is produced that's the question i hope you can see it clearly so we just said that one mole of zinc is equal to a will give us one mole of hydrogen and then one mole of zinc we know will liberate 22.4 dm cube of hydrogen gas so now given the particular mass of zinc that's 2.60 and the uh, the molar mass so we say 2.60 over 65 will give us the actual mole of zinc in this particular equation so putting it down there that's 2.60 over 65 is equals to then the volume of gas all over 22.4 dm cube if you make volume of hydrogen produce subject of formula that's going to be 2.60 over 65 times 22.4 dm cube which will actually give you 0 0.896 and as i said earlier you can actually approximate 0 0.896 to 0 0.9 and you will have the correct answer so why do we have this here let me repeat myself again it's because the molar volume of a gas is a standard temperature and pressure is equal to 22.4 km cube so this becomes our main equation this is the second equation this is the third equation so let me now take the last question for today so the, so the last question for today is this example 6 it says 9.60 grams of a gas x occupies the same volume as 0 0.30 grams of hydrogen under the same condition calculate the molar mass of x so from this question we discover we have a gas x and another one is hydrogen and since this hydrogen is a gas, we know it's going to be a molecule, not actually an atom. So the relative molecular mass is going to be 2. Here is just the relative atomic mass of hydrogen. But we'll be working with the relative molecular mass, which is 2. That's one hydrogen atom is... And a hydrogen atom has one. So two of it is then 2. That's for a molecule. Now, for us to... I want to also try to make you understand this question better. The 9.60 gram of a gas X occupies the same volume as 0 0.30 gram of hydrogen. That means since one molar volume, one mole of a gas occupies 22.4 dm cube. Okay, I'm trying to bring up that relationship so you understand better. 
what this thing is trying to imply is that the exact mole of hydrogen gas here is equal to the same mole of this gas so that means they are equimolar they have the same mole so whatever we obtain as a mole of hydrogen gas is exactly the mole of this gas and from the equation concerning moles we can easily obtain the molar mass of the gas x so let's solve uh, number of moles all over molar mass I know you must you have you are familiar with this equation by now let me see like as my first equation so for hydrogen for hydrogen the number of moles is equals to what is the mass 0 0.30 all over the molar mass which i introduced that to that will give us 0 0.15 mole so since we have obtained this now as i said earlier this statement occupies the same volume it's trying to make us understand that they are equimolar that the number of mole of this gas that this particular gas occupies is also equal to the number of moles that 0 0.30 grams of hydrogen occupies so what's going to happen is that for gas x we then substitute this mole this value obtained into equation one for gas x so that means the number of moles of gas x is what 0 0.15 and it is then equals to what is the mass the given mass the given mass is 9.60 the molar mass is unknown we don't really know what the molar mass is so if we make the molar mass subject of the formula we have the molar mass is equals to 9.60 all over 0 0.15 and that will give us let me quickly compute that and give you the answer that's 9.60 divided by 0 0.15 that's 64 so we obtain 64 gram per mole as the molar mass of this gas now we've solved six questions today and i believe from the principles we discussed and through all these examples you must have gained a better knowledge on how to quickly solve questions that involve calculations in chemistry so this was brought to you by Texel academy And you can subscribe to get more.